SiliconANGLE TV and Wikibon.org present Oracle Open World 2011. And now, host John Furrier and Dave Vellante on the Cube. Okay, welcome everyone to theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's presentation of theCUBE here at Oracle Open World 2011. My name is John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with... I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we are here covering all the angles. SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com, and Wikibon.org. If you've got questions, come on to the sites. We'll be covering the show like a blanket, John. So, uh, SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon's flagship telecast, The Cube, goes to the top events in the, in the industry, goes out, extracts the signal from the noise, and, and shares that knowledge with you. And we're here excited because Oracle is the big, bad, 500-pound gorilla, Dave, on the marketplace, and they're making a lot of money. They've got a huge ecosystem. They have a certain strategy that's different than everyone else's, but they attract the biggest and brightest customers and industry players to this event, and we're going to cover it for three days, for the next three days, eight hours a day, in depth, guests, spotlights, our normal commentary, controversial opinions, uh, bringing to you live, unfiltered, here on the ground floor, where again, year two, Dave, we snuck in to uh, Oracle. We did not get an official invite to broadcast, so we sneak into QLogic's booth here. Uh, QLogic was kind enough to donate half their booth to us, so uh, we yes. want to thank QLogic for supporting us here. Great spot here in the QLogic booth, and uh, we'll be broadcasting, as you said, John, for three days. And you know, the other point you made is Oracle is different, aren't they? They don't just follow everybody else, they do yeah, they go. They march to their own drummer, don't they? Yeah, I mean, Oracle is uh, a big company, and as we say, the big bad evil, you know, 500-pound gorilla. Uh, and and some people say, you know, they're doing a good job. But uh, Larry Ellison's keynote last night really exemplifies Oracle's kind of culture. They just come out there. It's like racing the sailboats. They have competition. They go after them hard, and they promote their stuff. And quite frankly, they don't care. They just want to steamroll the industry. Well, you were at the keynote last night, and it got kind of mixed reviews, didn't it? That being kind there, but um, um, I, I was there today. You, you were there last night. Give us your take, and I'll take you through what we heard today. Well, I think someone's going to get fired for that keynote because Larry Ellison's teleprompter kind of crashed, and really? he kind of was flailing and twisting in the wind. Actually turning around, presentation 101, never look at the slides. He actually turned around looking at the monitor. Um, and. He was prepped a bit, but he definitely was winging it. And at the end, he abruptly left the stage, and I tweeted at that time, someone will be fired. So it was, uh, I heard it was a big exa dump. A lot of exologic, exadata, exa, exa, mega, <laughs> exa. I mean, it, it was uh, classic Larry Ellison trying to be Steve Jobs. Um, I actually was critical of his keynote. I thought it was horrible. Um, but I like Larry up there. To me, seeing Larry doing his thing, industry legend, I've been watching it for 15 years on, at these events, and uh, the billionaire rolls in, does his thing, Mark Hurd's in the front row, um, and then now with Twitter, you have a whole nother event going on kind of simultaneously. So to me, I thought the keynote was classic Oracle, lay out the, the agenda, all hardware, all performance, uh, X of this, X of that. So clearly they're going hard at a closed uh, integrated system, a la Apple on the consumer side. So clearly that's the play for Oracle. And Larry did his thing, as you said, depositioning the competition, putting Oracle in positive light. Um, he did not zing and throw anyone under the bus. He did throw Teradata under the bus uh, at one point, but I think we'll see Larry, as you said, at the uh, on Wednesday's keynote. Let's save just that for Wednesday. Everyone. Yeah, so this morning we heard from uh, EMC's executives, EMC's Joe Tucci, who's been on theCUBE, and Pat Gelsinger, who's a many-time CUBE alum. They were up on stage for a long time, actually. Uh, you know, I don't know, they must have shelled out some serious dough for that, but uh, yeah, I don't know how that works, but they had some great FaceTime with the audience. The place was packed. Uh, they had very strong messaging, I thought, around VMware, cloud, and big data. Uh, and they did so respectfully, because it's Oracle's home court, so they're not going to trash Oracle, even though Oracle's probably going to trash EMC on Wednesday. But they were very strong, I thought. The messaging was good. Um, they talked about positioning things like Hadoop and Greenplum alongside of Oracle, which of course is not going to be Oracle's messaging, I would imagine. Well, I mean, Oracle yesterday, Larry's keynote, he, I don't think he used the word big data once in his slide. He actually positioned the whole big data evolution more like, you know, you saying words like unstructured, multi-dimensional data. 
he actually didn't even come out and use the word big data. So clearly Oracle has no interest in promoting anything like Hadoop or anything like that uh, unless they acquire um, like a Cloudera. So, you know, to me, when I heard, uh, heard about this, I'm like, wow, Cloudera would be a great acquisition for Oracle. Uh, Michael Olson sold his company to Oracle, knows, knows how to deal with those guys. But if they bought Cloudera, they would have an open source uh, trifecta. They'd have Java, they'd have MySQL, and then they'd have the unstructured. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Oracle's kicking the tires on Cloudera. Well, they announced some uh, Hadoop appliance this week, and, and so, but, but I just wanted to share with you as well, the, the, the EMC had Chad Sackich up on stage, another CUBE alum, doing all kinds of crazy demos. And usually these demos are pretty dry, right? You've, you've seen them before, and it's point and click and provisioning databases, woo! But, he got the crowd going pretty well, uh, and the way they did it is they were running um, social graphs, doing a demo of an insurance company, seeing you know what the insurance rate would be for Gelsinger, and then they ran one for for Tucci, you know, showing him driving fast cars. It was good tongue in cheek, and then they started doing Ellison, you know, the boat and everything else. And Pat, of course, cut Chad off after that. And the other, but uh, it was it was quite funny. The audience was laughing, uh, and then Heard came up, and he really didn't give a presentation. He just sort of played some videos. What was his insurance policy like? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Some, some serious uh, premiums on that. But so, uh, Heard basically played a video, a mind-melting, face-melting video on, on Oracle, like 20 to the 20 top banks, 20 to the 20 top telcos, 10 times faster, 17 times faster, you know, 50 times better, you know, that kind of video. Um, and in that video, they were, I think it was Saffir Katz was making comments, you know, we are big data. And the cloud too. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, Oracle. So. You know, Oracle. Yesterday, I made a tweet that got retweeted a lot. And uh, you know, Ellison wants to be the Steve Jobs of the industry for enterprise. And that's he made again the reference this year that like Apple, it's proprietary, it's closed, and that works for them. Creates amazing products. But I, you know, I tweeted and said, hey, you know, Steve Jobs disrupted an industry. Um, music, all kinds of, you know, with cloud and everything else, and consumer, Oracle's really not disrupting anything. They are an incumbent. So to me, they're like this big, you know, uh, company that's extracting rents and all the big accounts. So of course they got the top accounts. They bought out the uh, entire industry, Siebel, everyone else. So People Oracle saw, has a huge presence, right. so it's easy for them to flash those slides. Uh, but to me, I don't see Oracle really just really innovating like the way Apple did on the consumer side. I think they just have a huge presence. They are an incumbent. Clearly, that's why the message of performance was driven home. I think Larry, I'll see with his whole you know, sailing mentality, competitiveness, wants to use performance as his main you know, sales inhibitor differentiator. So I think that's a good move for Oracle, and that's what an incumbent would do. Yeah, well, I mean, you're right. And, and of course, we've obviously pointed out the warts in Oracle you know, over the past several, you know, a couple of cube gigs and years. Uh, but the numbers speak for themselves. I, one of the comments I wanted to make, though, Oracle was founded by Ellison and I believe his other co-founders in 1977, and he's outlasted Gates, he's yeah. outlasted Jobs, <laughs> he's he's obviously outlasted Grove, but you know Grove is older than Ellison, but he's outlasted them all. He's still hanging tough. He's he's engaged, and the numbers don't lie. I mean, this company threw off 12.3 billion dollars in free cash flow in the last four quarters, which is absolutely astounding. Um, I'll give you some other stats on operating profit. Oracle's operating profit post the Sun acquisition is, is 38% last quarter, and they're claiming, Saffir Katz is claiming they will get to the low 40s again, which is 42% pre-Sun acquisition. Just here's some comparisons with that. Um, Microsoft, 36%. This is operating margins. Uh, SAP, 27%. IBM, 18%. EMC, 15%. Hewlett Packard, 8%. I missed or, uh, Apple at 33%. Yeah. So Oracle's the king of operating profit, and they're going post Sun acquisition even higher. So we've talked about in the past that Sun acquisition, Oracle bought Sun for about 5.6 billion. Uh, it's trading at four times revenue. That acquisition's worth around 28 billion now to Oracle shareholders. That's a 22 billion dollar return. And, less than two years, I and mean, that's pretty yeah, amazing. I mean, Larry's not a dummy. I mean, he, I mean, first of all, I just want to say, I liked to see Larry up on stage, I agree with you. Started the company in 1977, he maverick, he rolls up on stage, does his thing, everyone's laughing, but it's, it's, it's not, it's really no joke, it's kind of fun to watch. He's, he's leading a huge company, the numbers speak for themselves. 
But at the end of the day, the Sun acquisition is a good deal, and that's the ultimate trophy for Larry, because back in the day, Sun was dominating, and that's a nice trophy he picks up from McNeely and company for a song at the time, and now obviously leveraging it. What's interesting is, after watching the keynote yesterday, all I could think about was HP. The whole conversation around hardware was absolutely, in my opinion, a direct strike at HP saying, hey, you want to talk hardware? We'll talk speeds and feeds. We'll talk all day long about performance um, and kind of trash the blade servers, the commodity blade servers. Um, but clearly, you see Oracle looking like HP in that keynote. Not a lot of talk of software, not a lot of talk about databases. He kind of, you know, obviously talked about performance with Exadata, et cetera, and Exadata Analytics. But, but for the most part, to me, the next trophy for Larry will be, will be HP. Um, Kara Swisher at All Things D said uh, there's no way that they'll buy HP, but absolutely in their war room, I can guarantee you there's a big acquisition of HP uh, hostile takeover bid going on. And obviously we report on SiliconAngle.com that HP is uh, hired Goldman to protect their interests against shareholder board reconfiguration. So the civil war within HP still goes on. Their target's on their back. Larry's got them lined up perfectly. That's an interesting scenario, and, John. And, uh, I think, I think it's definitely going on at, there. At the last quarterly financial analyst meeting, Ellison made this statement, let me be clear on this. I don't care if our x86 business goes to zero. So his you know, commodity x86 business, he means. So if there were to be an HP acquisition, you can, you can be sure that it would be a different looking company. I mean, well, I mean they go after them. HP doesn't want to be acquired. They're going to be hostily take over. If the price drops low, Oracle will roll in there and, and it's the ultimate trophy, in my opinion. But uh, you know, that being said, HP has got organizational issues. They're resolving. Meg Whitman's the new CEO. Ray Lane, kind of chairman, active chairman, uh, ex-Oracle. They hate each other, Larry and Ray. So, so uh, you know, I think the move to get rid of Leo Apotheker fast was a good move pay him a severance, move on. The guy was not a good fit. Meg Whitman can bring that Silicon Valley mojo to HP. Um, and HP's got to fight back. I think HP can't take any more punches from Oracle. They're going to have to throw a few back. How much dough did Leo take out of SAP? Was it 30 million? No, 12 million 12 was million severance. 12 million out of SAP? Out of SAP? Oh, no, no, HP? I don't know, I don't know what no. he did. He, got, he only lasted SAP, at SAP I thought for 30. 10 months as CEO. I thought he took 30, and I thought he's ultimately taken 30 out of HP. I was saying that if he does it one more time, it'll be $100 million. I mean, not bad for getting fired twice. And, and you know, tanking a couple of companies. That's a great, great career path. Just <laughs> pop in, overinflate your exp exp expertise, and then get fired with severance. Why don't I do that? Yeah. You know, it's like, damn. Um, so Dave, so the question that I want to ask you is, um, let's compare and contrast last year and this year. I know it's early, day one, we're going to go drill, do a drill down, we'll be here, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Oracle Open World, but you know, last year the vibe was kind of silent. Oracle was throwing cloud in a box out there, and the ecosystem was all here, all present and accounted for, but there wasn't a lot of vibe. I mean, everyone's kind of like, almost scared. So the ecosystem at Oracle is like SAP, robust, there's a ton of dollars in the ecosystem, but not a lot of energy, like rah, rah, Oracle. More like, okay, Oracle's just this big machine. Well, one of the big things that's different this year and last year is Oracle had just picked up Mark Hurd and they were going through a lawsuit, and so HP was one of the few companies last year that Oracle didn't throw under the bus, as you know. Um, and I would expect, well, it's already, we've already seen pre-Oracle open world with the whole autonomy rift, that's, that's changed. The other thing that's changed is, you know, you heard a lot of marketing hyperbole with Exadata and Exalogic last year, but again, the numbers don't lie. I mean, this product is kicking butt in the marketplace. You're talking about 150, you know, discrete new customers in the quarter that bought Exadata, 100 actually brand new Exadata customers. So, I mean, it's selling like crazy. So a lot of people criticize it. Um, I, I've criticized why it is, for the why is, why is Exadata selling so, so well? Here's why. In fact, uh, Thomas Kirian talked today about the secret sauce behind Exadata, and he pointed to four things which are not that radical. Um, offloading uh, st uh, storage functions to the disk, something they call smart scanning, you know, something that EMC has been doing for years. Uh, fast connectivity, which is really InfiniBand, uh, and you know, QLogic, we're here in the QLogic booth, they do a, a lot of InfiniBand stuff. Um, hierarchical storage management and heuristics that match data and device characteristics, putting the hot data into flash and the cold data onto you know, cheaper, slower spinning disk, and columnar compression. Those are four areas that you know, aren't really anything radical, but the packaging and the marketing and the execution of that business has been brilliant. And that's really why it's being so successful. So I'm just looking at Twitter here, we're getting some feedback from folks out there that said the stream might not be working well. If uh, Check your browser. 
Um, Mark, you can just check the feed. You know, we're on the floor here at Oracle Open World. Normally when we go to the events with uh, the Cube, which we call the, the sports center, the ESPN of tech, we usually get a marquee location, but Oracle uh, would not let us kind of come in there and do that this year. So we kind of got in through some support of QLogic. Go to QLogic.com, they make fiber channel, all the high-end uh, you know, networking adapters and uh, switches for high bandwidth you know, connectivity. You know, we heard Allison talking about Affiniband, we'll come back to that in a minute. But so we're here in Oracle and, we're, and we, we snuck in. They supported us here with the booth and we're going to do our normal independent live coverage of the event, wall to wall. We're going to analyze the keynotes, talk to guests, get their opinion, extract the signal from the noise. And for the folks out there on Twitter, um, the hashtag is uh, Oracle Open OOW11 and then our hashtag is pound the cube. Fire some questions off to us if you want us to, uh, to address anything. We will, happy to talk candidly. We're not afraid to hold back our opinions uh, so, with an analysis. So John, you know a lot about big data and, and Hadoop. I mean, you basically uh, exposed us at Wikibon to that whole trend a couple years ago. And um, Oracle this week has announced a, a Hadoop appliance. They're basically throwing their hat in the ring. Safricat said, you know, we are big data. Um, and their vision is that essentially that Oracle databases will be the final resting place for all that distributed big data. Allison says, we've been doing unstructured data for a long, long time. This is nothing new to us. What's your take on that? Is Oracle you know, the center of the big data universe or is, it, is, is Oracle a boat anchor to big data? Um, a boat anchor is actually a good post and you guys had a post on that. That was excellent, excellent analysis. I think you know, it depends how you look at it. I mean, the trend of big iron was a mainframe concept. You know the mini, mini computer days, the term glass house, big iron, for us old guys and uh, over 40 years old, those, those words mean something. So, so we're kind of going back to that cloud version of what a mainframe was or a glass house. So the notion of big iron is something that comes out. So if you look at the keynote yesterday, you see big iron kind of concepts. Parallelism, uh, parallel everything is what they're promoting. That's essentially kind of a systems concept engineered specifically around uh, special purpose computing, et cetera, et cetera. So that being said, given Oracle size, Dave, and their opinion of, I mean, their, their, uh, their opinion of how tech should go, and their incumbent place in the big accounts, yeah, they are by default a major, major player in big data if you define big data as having the database running a lot of these, these production systems. However, that being said, the trend is to move towards more of a decentralized client server-like environment in a cloud. So if you want to say there's a mainframe in the cloud, you can also say there's a distributed software and mini client server uh, architecture that's being promoted by SAP and others. So I don't think that Oracle will be the resting place for data in the database. I think that the database wars were going to continue. I think you're going to see NoSQL, no, a no database philosophy come out where you're going to see people engineer around Oracle. So you know, my vision is that Oracle will continue to be a player extracting rents from the marketplace, but ultimately you're going to see new incumbents engineer around Oracle, putting stuff in front of it, acceleration with SSD to using software techniques and things like Hadoop, et cetera. Now one of the things I would observe, I mean, as you know, Oracle, um, Ellison last year said we're going to spend $4 billion this year on R&D. Why stop there? And that's some serious change. And Sam Palmasano of IBM said, I worry about Oracle. I don't worry about HP. I worry about Oracle because they spend money on R&D. So to Oracle's credit, uh, while a lot of the technologies that they talk about aren't anything radically new, they're not necessarily things that they invented, they actually have the chops to yeah, yeah. actually you know, spend well, the I mean, money I mean, and, and I deliver. Mean, let's, be can't, let's be clear, let's be just say, you know, with the elephants in the room, everyone's afraid of Oracle. You know, VMware's afraid of Oracle. I mean, everyone's afraid of Oracle. They can have the market power to essentially stall any kind of proof of concept to production movement of, of new concepts. So whether it's a hypervisor or VMware or storage, et cetera. Great point, because you know, we were at uh, SAP Sapphire. What was the big buzz of the show was uh, SAP HANA, right? The, mm -hmm. the in-memory analytics. Yep. What did Oracle announce uh, Sunday night? Exalytics, in-memory yeah. analytics, right? And what's that going to do? That's going to freeze the market on HANA. Well, the Twitter stream yesterday was pretty fun during the keynote. It was, like, was kind of like a talk radio. So, you know, a lot of the folks you know, stepped up and had some good tweets and some good content. But after the Twitter stream uh, died down after the keynote, a lot of the thought leaders out there like Ray Wang and the analysts like Matt Eastwood, and et cetera, uh, and yourself and myself included, we're on there talking about SAP, and SAP actually had the mind share on the Twitter stream, mainly because SAP's keynotes at Sapphire were so much more crisper from a market standpoint than Oracle. Oracle talked speeds and feats, zeros and ones, performance, this and that. SAP was much, much specific around business value, 
um, use cases, and I thought their mobile story was compelling. So I thought SAP had a significantly better message in the Sapphire conference than Oracle did yesterday. I know it's early, um, and, and that was part of the commentary. And then people, we're talking about it, Ray Wang's going to come on later today at one o'clock Pacific time, and we're going to talk specifically about SAP products. Because Ray Wang's assertion, Dave, is that SAP's products really aren't really making it. So we're going to talk to Ray at one o'clock today. Ray Wang from Constellation Group, great analyst covering the enterprise space. Uh, we'll talk with Dave Yeah, he's and a I. straight shooter. And yeah, so we're going to get to the bottom of that. But so SAP has their challenges. I talked to the SAP folks last night and they told me that, you know, hey, we're ready to up our game and show the world at Madrid in November. First week in November in Madrid, Sapphire Europe's going to be there, so we'll stay tuned. They just had a very successful tech ed, which we covered um, extensively in SiliconANGLE. We'll keep on. So, you know, SAP is not a shrinking violet, and they'll punch back, so they're not afraid to pull the punches. Yeah, but I mean, we've been at uh, Sapphire now two years in a row, and I, I like the vibe. I, th I think you're absolutely right, John. The real emphasis on business value. SAP is all about business, and the other big message, of course, as you know, is mobile. And I question, you know, where is Oracle in mobile computing? It seems their main mobile strategy is to, you know, use its Java ownership to sue the Android ecosystem, right? I mean, you're seeing a lot of action there. Now, I think the suit has merit. I mean, legally, I'm not a lawyer, but from what I've read, and you know, I've actually read the, the license agreements, that, that there is merit, and they you know, have every right to do that, but what does that do for innovation? What does that say about Oracle's you know, commitment to innovation? Well, Oracle's version of innovation is different than what an entrepreneur or you know, venture capitalist and growing companies trying to take market share away, and that is, is that Oracle's clutching onto their accounts. They're proud of their 350,000 customers, as they said. In the keynote, they've had the top 20, this and that. So Oracle is fighting their own cannibalization. So, so that's, the, that's what they have to do. They have to essentially up their game and, and Oracle is a master at stalling the marketplace. And I think the keynote from Ellison to me speaks volumes that what they want to do is show the customers, look at we can deliver performance. There is no objection in the marketplace from a sales perspective that we can't sell around. And then they use the power of the licensing agreements as we talked about last year to hold things in check. So here, HANA gets stalled by their Exolytics. Um, Hadoop st gets stalled with, uh, with their NoSQL. So Oracle's just really strong <laughs> at competitive strategy. Um, Got to give them that, I have to, to say. Oracle is very strong in maintaining their position. And uh, again, I just don't see that. That's counter to innovation. That's holding on. It's kind of like Microsoft holding on to uh, Windows. Well, another thing that Ellison said recently is, is, again, let me make it clear, we have no interest in selling other people's IP. We have interest in selling our own IP, period. And that's yeah. what they're all about. Well, that's and, and how they define innovation in those terms. Well, if they don't invent it, they acquire it. So he, he actually said that in the keynote yesterday. Uh, Times 10 was the, was the company he was in referencing to. Um, but I'm getting some you know, tweets here from folks and, and comments on the, online. They say it's not about, you know, the product is about Larry. And um, Larry is a showman. I like watching him up on stage. It's fun to watch. Um, even when he's bombing the keynote like he did yesterday. And actually intimated, he didn't actually say he was hungover. He just said last night he was at his son's wedding in Palm Springs. Didn't sleep much, which might be saying he just flew in, saw the slides, teleprompter failed. Um, but overall, fun keynote. I was uh, having a good time on Twitter. Um, I thought it was boring. I hope he delivers a better job um, on Wednesday. Well, it's always interesting when he talks about the competition, which I'm sure he's going to do on Wednesday. Now, John. Um, we're going to shift gears a little bit here and, um, and, and dig in to one of our spotlights. Uh, as you know, at VMworld this year, we created this concept of spotlights. And these are in-depth segments designed to help practitioners better understand a topic. And they are sponsored segments. This segment is sponsored by e EMC Backup and Recovery uh, Group. And we're going to look at Oracle Backup. So what John and I are going to do is have a little discussion about Oracle Backup uh, and some of the alternatives and options that uh, DBAs and Oracle customers have. And then we're going to drill in with some subject matter experts. Uh, we're going to talk to Stephen Manley, who's the CTO of uh, EMC's BRS Group. Uh, we've got uh, Stephen Zay, who's the Senior Vice President of SCI, a CIO uh, discussion. And then we're going to go uh, in, in deep into the technical side as well, John. So um, why don't we kick that off? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, Dave, I mean, what people, I just, before we get started that, I just want to say that you know, people, I talk in the industry all the time about, you know, this and that, and all the hot trends, you know, social networking, cloud, mobile, social, all the stuff we cover. But when you hear what Larry Ellison is saying in his keynote, one thing is coming clear with cloud, and that is, is that storage 
and we've been covering storage deep for over a year and a half now, you've been doing it for a very long time, is the essence of the cloud. So you talk about big data, the database conversation, it's all coming back to storage. The storage equation is broken, it's being transformed with SSDs and other things, it's transforming this entire environment. You throw virtualization into the mix, it's absolutely transforming. So what does that mean? That means existing huge amounts of infrastructure are going to be uh, displaced and transitioned. And one of them is backup and recovery, which when you look at the tsunami in Japan to other events, is critical. And you know, it's not talked about in the mainstream, but you know, there are some cool tech out there around virtualization that allows for the backup and recovery. So it's a really important topic. We hear a lot about it on, on uh, email and Twitter. So I think it's, it's critical that we uh, 